right so we'll continue the topic uh, mathematical modeling mathematical modeling in the last class we have discussed about the state variables and state equations and in this class we will develop the mathematical model first for a CSTR continuously star tank reactor. So, we will take CSTR example and we will derive the mathematical model. This is a jacketed CSTR. This is a tank this is a jacket now one medium is introduced here and that medium is coming out here first of all the feed which is entering to the reactor has the flow rate of F i. Concentration of the feed is C A i and temperature is T i. The suffix i indicates the input, A is the component, I mean C A i is the input concentration of component i and T i is the input temperature fine. The product steam which is coming out from this CSTR has a flow rate of F concentration in terms of component A is C A and temperature is T. <coughs> Now, before deriving the mathematical model for this CSTR, first we will know the units of different flows like F i and F along with the medium coolant medium flow rate F c. So, all these flow rates are basically volumetric flow rate, volumetric flow rate here temperature is T C i, outlet flow rate is F C and outlet coolant temperature is T C naught. Concentration C A and inlet concentration C A i both are molar concentration. I mean unit is say mole per unit volume fine C A and C A i both are molar concentration. For example, they are in mole per unit volume. Next we will consider the assumptions. assumptions. So, first assumption is perfect mixing, first assumption is perfect mixing that means the temperature of this outlet steam T and composition C A they are same with that of the reactor reaction mixture fine. The perfect mixing indicates uh, everywhere in this tank temperature and concentration they are identical and the outlet temperature and composition also identical with the temperature and concentration of reacting, reacting mixture. 
second assumption is liquid density rho and the heat capacity C p, they are constant. Liquid density rho and heat capacity C p, they are constant. Third assumption is, we are considering a simple exothermic first order reaction. This is a simple exothermic first order reaction. exothermic first order reaction and to remove this exothermic heat the a coolant steam is introduced in this jacket this is a coolant steam to remove the exothermic heat a coolant steam is introduced in the jacket fourth assumption is the reactor is perfectly insulated. <coughs> the reactor is perfectly insulated, that means there is no heat loss from the reactor to the surroundings. It means no heat loss from the system to the surroundings. Fifth one is coolant is perfectly mixed in the jacket, coolant is perfectly mixed in the jacket. Fine. And last assumption is, we will not consider any energy balance for the jacket. There is no energy balance for the jacket, fine. These are the assumptions adopted for this CSTR system and based on these assumptions, we will derive the modeling equations. Now, first we will go for the overall mass balance. First, we will go for overall mass balance. So, to develop the overall mass balance of this CSTR system, we need the conservation of mass. What is that? Conservation of mass is rate of mass accumulation equals to rate of mass input minus rate of mass output. this is the conservation of mass. Now, for this CSTR system, what is this term? I mean, how we can represent the mass of accumulation? See, in this reactor system, uh, you consider the volume of the liquid is V. The volume of the liquid in the reactor is V. Now, if V is the volume, if we multiply with density, so this whole term becomes mass. Now, differentiation of this is the mass flow rate, fine, d d t V rho, that is the rate of mass accumulation. Now, rate of mass input, input to the system is 
basically F i, but we know that F i is the volumetric flow rate. So, we have to multiply with rho. So, F i multiplied by rho that is the input mass rate. Similarly, what will be the output? Output flow rate, I mean the volumetric flow rate that is F. So, if we multiply with rho, then this is the output rate. Now, we have assumed that rho and C p both are constant. If rho is constant, then we can write this rho d v d t equals to f i rho minus f rho. That means, d v d t equals to f i minus f. Fine. Suppose, this is equation number 1. So, this is the mass balance equation. Fine. Similarly, we can go for mass balance of component A or you can say the component mass balance. So, we will consider in the next mass balance or component mass balance. component mass balance and the component is here component A. So, what is the <coughs> conservation principle for this rate of accumulation of component A? this is the accumulation term, then rate of input of component A, then rate of generation, rate of generation of component A minus rate of output of component A. Fine. This is the conservation principle for component mass balance. Now, we have to derive all these, we have to write all these individual terms, accumulation, input, output and generation. Now, for this CSTS system, what is the accumulation term? Volume multiplied by C A. Now, if we want to represent in terms of rate, then D D T of V C A. Clear? This is mole per unit time, uh, mole per unit volume C A and V is volume. So, mole per unit time overall. So, what is the input? F i is the flow rate of input stream and concentration is C a i. So, F i multiplied by C a i that is the rate of input of component A. Now, what is the generation? Minus R a into V. See, minus R a is the rate of disappearance of A if we multiply with minus sign, then we get the generation, fine. Minus R A is the rate of disappearance of A. So, if we multiply with minus, then that becomes generation. And what is the output? Output is F multiplied by concentration of output stream that is C A. So, from the <coughs> conservation principle, we got this equation, fine. Now, we can write this equation in this form C A d V d T plus V d C A d T. 
equals to f i c a i minus f c a minus minus of r a into v. Now, we know the d v d t term, I mean if we substitute equation 1, then this equation becomes C a f i minus f plus v d c a d t equals to f i c a i minus f c a minus minus of r a into v. Now, this f multiplied by c a and this f c a will be cancelled out. Then we can rearrange this equation to v d c a d t equals to f i c a i minus c a minus minus of r a into v. If we divide again both sides by v, we will finally get d c a d t equals to f i divided by v c a i minus c a minus minus of r a minus of r is the rate of disappearance of a. Now, if we consider Arrhenius equation, if we consider Arrhenius equation, then accordingly we can write minus of r a equals to k naught exponential of minus of e divided by r t into c a. According to the Arrhenius principle, the reaction rate equals to pre exponential factor, then exponential of minus E divided by R T C A is the activation energy and R is the universal gas constant. If we substitute this reaction rate expression here, then finally we get D C A D T equals to f i divided by v c a i minus c a minus k naught c a exponential of minus of e divided by r t. So, this is the final form of component mass balance equation. Fine. So, these two equations we have derived based on the conservation of mass. In the next we will consider the energy balance equation, energy balance equation, energy balance equation for the example CSTL system. What is the conservation principle of energy? Conservation principle we can write in this form rate of energy accumulation equals to rate of energy input minus rate of energy output minus rate of energy removed. 
by the coolant. plus rate of energy added added by exothermic reaction so here four terms are involved accumulation, input, output, energy removal and energy added by the exothermic reaction. So, next we have to represent all these terms using the mathematical terms, I mean variables. So, what is the energy accumulation? See, volume in the tank is represented by V, fine. Uh, and if we multiply with rho, this becomes M, then C P, then D T. Energy term we can write in terms of M C P D T. Now, here we are considering reference temperature equals 0. Now, if we write here d d t of v rho c p t, then this becomes rate of accumulation of energy. Now, next we will consider the rate of energy input. Volumetric flow rate of input steam that is F i. If we multiply with rho, then that becomes mass flow rate. Similarly, C p, then d t, I mean T i minus T reference. Here, reference temperature we are assuming 0. So, T i, and you recall we have considered the C p that is constant. What will be the output rate of energy output? The flow rate of outlet steam, I mean the volumetric flow rate that is F. Similarly, if we multiply rho, this becomes mass C p and outlet temperature is T. Now, rate of energy removed by the coolant this one, this will represent by Q. Energy removed by the coolant is represented by here Q. What is Q? How we can calculate Q? We know flow rate F c, rho c, C p c and then temperature difference is outlet temperature of coolant minus inlet temperature of coolant, fine. What is the last term? I mean how we can represent the last term? Last term we have to consider in this way minus del H that is heat of reaction, then minus R A multiplied by V minus del H is here heat of reaction. It is well known to us that heat of reaction is negative, I mean this negative term is used for the case of exothermic reaction and for endothermic reaction we use here positive sign. So, this term represents the energy added by exothermic reaction. Next, we need to simplify this equation. Now, dividing both sides by rho C p, V d capital T d small t plus temperature d V d t equals to F i t i, since we have 
we are dividing both sides by rho C p. Next term is f multiplied by t, then q divided by rho C p and finally, minus del h minus r a b divided by rho C p. Now, we will substitute this term d v d t. We have the equation of d v d t obtained from the total mass balance. If we substitute d v d t, then we can write it like this way t multiplied by f i minus f equals to f i t i minus f t minus q divided by rho C p plus minus of del h minus of r a into v divided by rho C p. <coughs> now, this f t and this f t we can cancel and then we get v d t d t equals to f i t i minus t minus q divided by rho C p plus minus of del h minus of r into v divided by rho C p. And finally, we will divide both sides by this volume term. Then we get d t d t equals to f i divided by v t i minus t minus q divided by v rho C p plus minus of del h minus of r a divided by rho C p. Now, again we will substitute here the Arrhenius law, then d t d t equals to f i divided by v t i minus t minus q divided by v rho C p plus minus of del h k naught C a exponential of minus e divided by r t whole divided by rho c. So, this is the energy balance equation, this is the energy balance equation. So, for the example CSTL system, we got three equations, one is based on total mass balance then component mass balance and last one is based on energy balance. Now, the modeling equations I am writing here, one we got d v d t that is equals to f i minus f, second equation d c a d t that we got f i divided by v c a i minus c a minus k naught c a exponential of minus e divided by r t and energy balance equation we got that is d t d t equals to f i by v into t i minus t minus q divided by v rho c p plus minus of del h c a k naught 
exponential of minus e divided by r t whole divided by rho c t fine. Here I have mentioned that q, q equals to our coolant flow rate is f c. Now density is suppose rho c, heat capacity if we consider C P C multiplied by the temperature difference. What is the outlet temperature of this? T C O, T C O minus T C I. So, this is the expression for Q. Now, we will just classify, we will just uh, see what are the different variables involved in the modeling equations. Here, what are the input variables? Input variables are C A i, then F i, then T i, then Q. We are not considering F C T C, uh, F C T C i, we are considering Q and F definitely f will be input variable if this is considered as the manipulated variable for the for for controlling the liquid height or liquid volume so these are the input variables what are the output variables output variables are here G, C A and T. See, in these three modeling equations, G, C A and T, they are present within the accumulation term. So, these three variables are also state variables. So, we can write here, these are also state variables because they are present within the accumulation term. Now, among these input variables, which are the manipulated variables? For the example CSTL system, if we consider liquid volume is the first, I mean one control variable and another one is say temperature fine. Now, the corresponding manipulated variables are, if we consider f as the manipulated variable for g and q as the manipulated variable for temperature, then what are the, so q and f, these two are basically manipulated variables, fine. So, these three, I mean the rest input variables are load variable or disturbance variables, fine. Among these five input variables, two are the manipulated variables and other three are the load variables. So, this is the development of model structure for the sample <coughs> CSTL and we have we have seen the different variables which are involved in this example CSTL. Before going to discuss another system, we will study about the degrees of freedom analysis. So, we will next study the degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom. So, so far we have discussed about the modeling of chemical processes. After deriving the mathematical model of a process, we need to solve those modeling equations. The solution of a model structure is basically called simulation. 
fine. We need to simulate the modeling equations. Now, for the simulation of a modeling equation, we need to describe this degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom which suppose is represented by f, then we can write f equals to v minus e. Degrees of freedom we are representing here by f, then f equals to v minus e. v is the total number of independent variables, total number of independent process variables, process variables and E is the total number of independent equations. independent equations fine. So, degrees of freedom basically total number of variables independent variables minus total number of equations. Now, in the analysis of degrees of freedom we will consider three different cases. In the first case we will consider say f equals to 0 it means number of independent variables equals to number of independent equations. That means, the system is exactly specified. When degrees of freedom equals 0, then we can write v equals to e that means, number of independent process variables equals the number of independent equations. In this situation, we can say the system is exactly specified. I mean, there is no problem to find the solution of the modeling equations. In the second case, we will consider f is greater than 0. That means, v is greater than e fine. So, in this case the system is called under specified. How we can make it exactly specified system? By the inclusion of f number of additional equations. So, to make it exactly specified we need f additional equations. To make the under specified system exactly specified, we need f number of additional equations, then we can only get the solution of the modeling equations. Last case is f is less than 0. That means, total number of independent process variables is less than total number of independent equations. And in this case, the system is called over specified, fine. So, to make this over specified system exactly specified, we need to remove f number of equations. So, to make the over specified system exactly specified, we need to remove f number of equations. Usually in practice, the case 2 is the common, I mean f greater than 0 is the common case in practice, f greater than 0 that means, v greater than 0. Now, thing is that if this is the situation f greater than 0, how we can make it exactly specified? Basically, there are two options. First option is we can 
specify more number of disturbance variables. So, by specifying more number of disturbance variables. If we can specify more number of disturbance variables, then number of unknown variables is reduced fine. So, this is one option and in the second option by incorporating by incorporating more number of controller equations. This is the second option either we have to reduce the number of unknown variables or we have to increase the number of equations to make the f equals 0. Anyway, we will discuss this degrees of freedom with taking one simple example. We will consider the uh, star tank heater to, to describe this degrees of freedom analysis. Star tank heater example for degrees of freedom analysis. So, before going to analyze the degrees of freedom, we need the model. So, first we will develop the model for this system and then we will go for the degrees of freedom analysis. The schematic of this system we have to draw, we have to develop first. So, this is a phi and temperature is T i. Now, steam is introduced here through the coil for heating purpose. This is steam suppose flow rate is q, outlet flow rate is f and temperature is t. Now, liquid in the tank has the height of h, temperature here also t, cross sectional area of this tank is a. Now, before going to develop the model, we need to consider some assumptions fine. So, what are these assumptions? First assumption is the tank is perfectly mixed, the tank is perfectly mixed. Second assumption is rho and C p both are constant. Third assumption is the tank is perfectly insulated, the tank is perfectly insulated that means there is no heat loss from the tank to the surrounding. So, first we will develop the total mass balance equation, total mass balance equation fine. So, what is the accumulation of mass B d t liquid height multiplied by cross sectional area that is volume, volume multiplied by density that is mass h is the liquid height multiplied by cross sectional area, this is volume. Now, volume multiplied by density that is mass. So, this is mass flow rate, I mean this is the rate of accumulation. What is the inflow rate? F i rho minus F rho, this is the outflow rate. So, we can write this equation A d h d t equals to f i minus f. This is the total mass balance equation. Since rho is constant, 
So, we can get this from this equation. You give some equation number for this, suppose this is equation number 1. In the next, you will go for energy balance, fine. What is the accumulation term? Height multiplied by area, that is volume, volume multiplied by rho, mass, mass Cp, temperature difference is T minus suppose T reference. So, d d t of this is the accumulation term, h multiplied by rho that is volume multiplied by rho, h multiplied by a that is volume multiplied by rho that is mass. So, if this is the mass C p and this is temperature difference, what is the energy input rate f i rho this is mass flow rate. Cp Ti minus T reference. This is the energy input rate. What will be the energy output rate? F rho Cp T minus T reference. Fine. And another term is energy supplied by steam per unit time energy supplied by steam per unit time that is Q. Basically, the unit of Q is here energy per unit time. Say for example, British thermal unit per minute, uh, British thermal unit per minute, yeah. The unit of this is energy per unit time. So, this is the energy added or energy supplied by steam per unit time. Now, if we simplify this considering T reference equals to 0, considering T reference equals to 0 and if we simplify the energy balance equation, we will get A H d t d t equals to F i T i minus T plus <coughs> Q divided by rho C p. This is the energy balance equation. If we consider T reference equals to 0 and if we simplify, finally, we will get this energy balance equation. Fine. So, there are basically two equations. One is based on total mass balance and another one is based on energy balance. So, these two equations are first one is A d h d t equals to F i minus F and this is A h d t d t equals to F i T i minus T plus Q divided by rho C p you give some equation number to this, suppose this is equation number 2. So, this is the model structure, fine. Now, we will go for the degrees of freedom analysis. How many variables are involved in this equation? H, F i, F, T, T i, and q, fine. So, these are the variables. We can write V equals to 6, agree or not, agree. So, there are 6 unknown variables. Then how many equations are involved there? One is equation 1 and another one is equation so, we can write E equals to 2. So, what is F? 6 minus 2 that is equals to 4. <coughs> so, degrees of freedom for the example system is 4. We have discussed there are two ways to reduce the degrees of freedom. 
first option is we can specify some load variables fine what are the load variables in this system one is fi another load variable is ti so if we can specify these two load variables then the degrees of freedom reduces to 4 minus 2 that is 2 initially it was 4 now two load variables we are specifying how we can specify by the direct measurement we can measure this flow rate we can measure this temperature then we can get the information of flow rate and temperature that means fi and ti are known that means degrees of freedom we can write 4 minus 2 that is 2 another option i told by including some control equations for the example liquid heating tank system what are the <coughs> controlled variable and manipulated variable pairs to be considered one is height another one is temperature fine so we can manipulate this height we can control this height by the manipulation of suppose if we can control this temperature by the manipulation of q so we can develop two control equations although we did not study the control equations i am just mentioning the simplest control equations for these two control pairs if f is the manipulated variable the control equation we can write like this f equals to f s plus k c f multiplied by h b minus h f s is the steady state value of f this is the steady state value of f kcf is one tuning parameter which the values of that tuning parameter we need to determine that is constant kcf basically hd is the desired value and h is the liquid height so this is one additional equation similarly if we consider another control scheme for temperature in which q is the manipulated variable we can add another equation q equals to q s plus k c q t d minus t fine here q s is the steady state value of q k c q is the controller tuning parameter that is a constant term then this is desired temperature fine so additionally we are getting two equations we had f equals to 2 <coughs> now if we can add two equations then the degrees of freedom becomes 0 got the point so we had basically degrees of freedom 4 additionally we have specified two e variables load variables through direct measurement then we have we have just paired controlled variable manipulated variable then we got two additional control equations and finally the degrees of freedom becomes zero that means the system is exactly specified fine thank you